Um, can you hear me at the back without a microphone? Is that okay? Good, then I'll, uh, I'll leave it off. Um, first of all, apologies from Carsten Toller, who cannot be here today. Um, it's really his paper, so you have a non-tech person doing a tech presentation, but um, it's meant I've actually had to try and understand what he writes, and I now understood something he presented five years ago in Paris. It took me five years to understand, but um, it's been a useful exercise for me. And I'm also, as um, Florian said, I co-chaired a session on data quality in Tübingen last year, and I'm glad to see there are people interested in data quality. Um, to begin, they moved us to the last slot of the meeting, and it was a very, very poor turnout. Um, so it's an important, an important matter. So good to have you here. Um, this was our journey, Carsten, well, Carsten's journey mainly through uh, what we want to talk about, about uncertainty and cleaning data. Uh, CAA in Paris 2014, Carsten looked at how to model uncertainty. Then two years ago at Atlanta, he talked about ontology-based quality checking. And as I say, last year at Tubingen, we had a session on data quality in general. And this is where we move on today. I, the, we're going to be presenting, well, I'm going to be presenting two uh, projects that Carsten works on. This is our CoinFind database, Antique von Münzen in Europa. Um, and the point on this database is that we are flagging, we are flagging uncertainty on the fields. The first thing I learned from Carsten was you do not put question marks into a database. Um, he asked me what the question mark meant and assumed that it meant the same thing in the next entry in the same field. And of course it didn't. So we flag, um, we're now flagging uncertainty and not including it in the entry. But what do we actually mean? Um, I mean, I'm not sure if it is a gripper. I'm not sure if it's Faustina or if it's a gripper. Well, actually, I should be able to tell the difference between the two quite why he chose that example. I don't know. Or I'm not sure if it's either of them. So, you know, what, what do we mean here? So this is one of the first problems about what do we, we actually have to understand what we mean when we talk about uncertainty. Um, another aspect that causes problems with data quality is incompleteness of data. When a field is not filled, is that relevant? Is that not relevant? Now, our CoinFi database has three instances in Frankfurt, Warsaw, and Heidelberg, and Carsten just sort of looked through the entries to see how complete they are. Um, for example, or in our database in Frankfurt, 23% of the entries do have uncertainty flagged somewhere in, um, in, in the data. Um, uh, Heidelberg, it's rising up to 62%. Now, this is quite interesting because it's partly based on where the material is coming from. Our database, we're mainly taking it out of literature, but some of it's coming from actual coins. Um, and the literature is not really flagging much uncertainty. So we've not got much in. Whereas in Heidelberg, they're dealing with coin finds, which are basically horrible, crappy bits of corroded metal, and you're getting a lot of uncertainty coming in there. So, um, but then looking at completeness, for example, uh, what he calls level one, how, does it say who struck the coin? Does it have the date? Does it have the denomination, the mint and material? And um, we're looking here at the different levels. Heidelberg's very complete. The Polish instance is not very complete in this. They have a great deal of uncertain uh, data, and also they've still um, they're still entering data. They, they they put in kind of the first level stuff, but not go further. And then if we come down to, do we have the diameter and the weight of the coins? Well, we're going from literature, which doesn't include that data, so we don't have it. But in Heidelberg, they have the coins, and so it's almost always in. So the origin of where um, the data is coming from is a very important point on, the, on these examples. Now, um, where the, Carson's then taken this data and using the ontology and the language of the numisma.org, the, the numismatic link open data resource, he's 
taken Numisma and using it as a way of checking the quality of the data. Now, for example, I have a coin and I have two possible identifications for it. Um, and two possible identifications in one of the web resources, Online Coins of the Roman Empire. Now, how do I model it? Well, one way of doing it would be to simply link it to both of those entries, but that's not actually right because it isn't either of those entries. One interesting solution that some Polish colleagues have come up with is that they enter as the value a query, which when put in to the online resource, Online Coins of the Roman Empire, will give you the result that you want. For example, here, um, this, is, this is the Sparkle query, well, the result of the Sparkle query into, into the resource online coin to Roadmap, which produces these two and just these two entries. And they are then putting that query into the field, linking the identification of the coin. Now, this looks quite nice. Um, it's producing the coins you want, but if there are a few problems. It relies on the online system, online coins of the Roman Empire. It relies on the query language being used by Oka staying the same. So if Ethan changes the way the queries are run, then this won't work anymore. And um, also the coin types that we're linking to, they might not be stable because there might be a new edition of the, the reference work um, and all of these might get changed. So um, this works quite, seems to work quite well, but it's not really a, a, a good solution. But as I say, we've been checking our data against various um, concepts in nomisma.org. Nomisma.org itself has uncertainty in 195 of the concepts that it um, that it uh, defines. Um, and even there on these definitions, we're getting very different kinds of uncertainty. For example, the Victoriatus, we're not really, there's a certain argument about what actually the value of this coin was. So there's an uncertainty in the value that the coin had in the Roman world. Um, there's uncertainty of the reading, for example, of the name on a coin. Is it an A or is it an L? So that this ID, this URI again has some uncertainty in the definition of of the uh, of the of the concept. There's also uncertainty that's coming out of the RDF modeling. For example, um, Siciliotai, this mint in Sicily, we don't know where it was. So how are you going to model that when you don't know where the mint was? But uncertain mint can also be something else. There is a mint striking in AD 69, producing Roman coins. We don't have a name for the mint at all. We, we don't know, have no idea at all. We just can recognize a group of coins and know they're being produced somewhere. But we don't know if it's in Gaul or if it's in Spain or in Italy. So again, another, um, uh, another level uh, of uncertainty there within Nomisma. Um, so how are we going to cope with this, um, with this uncertainty in Nomisma? Um, at present, this mint, Sikeliotai, has the uncertainty modeled in to the geospatial data. The, this is the, the RDF, when you, when you pull up this page on the web, this is the, uh, basically the translation of the RDF. Um, so the latitude and longitude are linked to the has uncertainty. And we define, we have uncertain value within the numisma of vocabulary and ontology. So this is how it's done at present. And this is basically what it then looks like. You have the mint and you have the latitude and longitude. But the trouble is, it's the mint that is linked through to uncertain. But the mint isn't actually uncertain. What is uncertain is the link between the concept of the mint and the latitude and longitude. So um, this, is a, this is a bit problematic because it could mean anything is uncertain. So the suggestion that Carsten came up with um, in Paris was to introduce blank nodes in between the concept of the mint and the, and the, um, and the, uh, the, uh, 
the, uh, the latitude and longitude, um, which actually could, these blank nodes can then be linked through to the uncertainty. So um, it actually does kind of put the uncertainty where it is. The uncertainty is in the relationship between these two um, concepts. Um, it's obviously when you're modeling, it makes things very complicated. But when you're querying the data, it's going to give you a better answer and a better understanding of where um, the uncertainty is. And as he says, as, a, as an ontology expert, he would prefer to have the modeling uh, done this way. So this is one way of looking at um, uncertainty then within um, Nomisma itself. The second part of the presentation, so that's talking about difficulties of uncertainty. Now using um, Nomisma, which defines these concepts, as a way of checking how clean our data is. So comparing, for example, I have an entry for Augustus in my database, a coin type of Augustus. There's a Nomisma resource out there, online coins of the Roman Empire in this case, which says this coin type is produced at this mint and is of this date. And I can then check back to my database, is my data the same as in Nomisma? Of course, in an ideal world, people will be drawing the data in from Nomisma to fill out their, uh, fill out their uh, database. But so, um, Carsten started looking at how this, how this check against things could be done. And again, for our database, Antique Fundments in Europa, and a different project from the Academy in Berlin, Corpus Numorum Tracorum, so the corpus of coins from ancient coins from Thrace. And the example I'm going to show you here is um, from, from these. Now, the way he did it is that he starts off with the data, which is going to be, in, well, in our case, in a relational MySQL database. He's then transferring, mapping the data to RDF then running a Sparkle query over the RDF and then producing results which are coming into, I have to say it, an Excel spreadsheet. Um, and so um, and basically then getting this, these results here, which I'll, I'll go through with you. Now, basically the spreadsheet has um, the the results for the individual checks he's running, and then an overview of the whole thing. And this is the result that's coming out. So what it's doing is it's taking the person, for example, who is um, entered on the database as having struck or, or being visible on the coin, let's say Augustus, and checking it against what online coins of the Roman Empire says about this coin type. Um, so um, looking at a reference data set of 7,853 coins in this case, only in 40 cases was the entry for the portrait on the coin inconsistent with what it should be according to the type catalog. Um, did the start date and end date given for the production of the coin map? Well, in this case, it's up to 167 um, and coming out at 2%. Um, that's then being flagged as being intermediate, but we can come down, for example, here is the diameter and weight of the coin in, and in this case, um, on the particular data set he was looking at here, 60% doesn't have this data in. Now, that's coming flagged up red. It's also then telling you what is, what is the problem here. In this case, it's inconsistent with the type catalog for what the, the type of the coin should be giving you. On these ones, it's coming up as quite simply. It doesn't matter. It's just not in there. It's missing. So it's actually giving us uh, what kind of bad quality we have. And in this case, on the diameter and the weight of the coin, the system is flagging outliers, where basically it's saying it's three, well, 30 centimeters <coughs> instead of three centimeters or something like that. And then, but then the point is, ah, uh, uh, yeah, and then. What, what is important is the spreadsheet also records the, the Sparkle query, which was run to produce this data, so you know where, where it's coming from. Um, it's then letting you have the, 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 it's giving you the date at which this problem was first recognized, 
So when you're rerunning this, you can see um, what corrections are being done, and it's allowing people to enter people, people when they're checking it um, to enter uh, comments. Um, the point being, it doesn't matter how automatized the whole thing is, um, you need the domain experts to run through it and to, to say, okay, it looks wrong, but actually it's right, it's okay. It's an exception um, that's, that's allowed. Um, and then the idea is that you run through this system several times. Um, so you start with the data and you check it against the ontology or the type series catalog on the web. You run, well, you run the quality check, you get your results in the Excel spreadsheet. Um, it, the spreadsheet goes to the domain expert to either say, don't worry, this is okay, or to, to change the data. So it might go, you might have to go back to the database and start again. On the other hand, the domain expert might just add the comments and say, it's okay, run it. And so you've got this a, a circle um, running around here, uh, the occasion where the data has to go back and be, and be rechecked. And then you're getting the spreadsheet a second time showing you how things have improved. Um, for example, this is a, a, a genuine case on the CNT database that they ran the query um, and you can see um, the differences are coming up here. For example, here we had 9% um, the start and end date was incorrect. Running it through um, the second time, it's down to 2%. And they're also interesting that we can now see the reference size. Uh, um, we've nearly doubled the number of coins in there, but at the same time, reduced um, the number of errors. So th at this point, we can actually see how the data is being improved. We can monitor the quality of the data and um, how it's running. Um, yeah, for example, yeah, here from 5 to 0.5% for rule 1 and from 9.5 to 2.1 um, for rule 2. So to sum up very briefly, um, data quality is important. It's particularly important in linked open data where one mistake can actually explode exponentially across the web. For a while, the British Museum had the mint of Heraclea, which is on the um, on the Propontis mapped to southern Italy, which was producing some very, to a town of the same name in southern Italy, which was then being plastered basically across the web by people who were using that URI. But automated tools can help include, improve um, data quality. Um, they, the, the, the tools are starting to flag up a certain amount of uncertainty, gives us a good chance to work out um, what well, how to solve it using tools. And um, it's very important that we raise awareness for data quality. Um, we also, important to have a discussion about uncertain data. What do we mean by uncertainty? Um, a, as you can see in some of our examples, a high percentage of our material is affected by it. We have to know what we want to model and how we want to model it and have to know exactly how we should do it. So. Thank you very much. This is actually should have been my opening slide because this is Carsten's first comment to me about never use a question mark. So thank you.